Josh. Hey everyone, welcome back to Newbie Star Trek. As always, I'm Marvin, and I'm here with Dan and Ricardo. Hello everybody. Hey, Hello. how's it going? Newbie Star Trek, the same name it's always been. Yeah. <laughs> shut <laughs> up, don't ruin it. <laughs> you shut up. You shut up. <laughs> it took us years. Well, well goodbye us, everyone. It took That's us years to podcast. figure out figure out this name. <laughs> Uh, so as always, uh, Ricardo has not seen any episodes of the series except for the ones we've already seen for the channel or mm-hmm. the channel, <laughs> the podcast, yes. and also uh, the one he accidentally watched, which I believe was Data Lore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I've seen the whole series, but I I've forgotten much of it. And Dan is also seen some of it, and he's here, and we're all and here. I forgot most of that. <laughs> So we're, we're, this podcast is an intervention where we're trying to figure out what's going on with Star Trek. Um, Yeah, we're all trying to fill that Star Trek shaped hole in our lives. (laughs) And force Ricardo to come along with us for the ride. We'll jam him in there too. Yeah. (laughs) So this week's episode was Code of Honor. Spoilers, most of the cast of TNG claims this is the worst episode of Star Trek ever made. So Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Frakes called it a piece of shit and he used a certain descriptor for the um, yeah, aside the, the, from speci- it. the specific term he used is racist piece of shit. <laughs> the full quote is the worst and most embarrassing and one that even Gene would have been embarrassed by was that horrible racist episode from the first season, Code of Honor, Oh My God in Heaven. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, so that's a good tone setter for what we're going to discuss today. This episode came out in the 12th of October, 1987. Dan, what was going on in this Halloweeny time? It wasn't quite Halloween yet. Um, and actually, in my uh, perusing of, of the time in question, there actually wasn't a whole lot going on. Um, for one, Lisa Lisa and Colt Jam were on top of the charts with Lost in Emotion. Fatal Attraction was still like, they were, it was dominating the box office and will continue to dominate the box office for several more weeks. Yeah, that was quite a phenomenon. Wasn't it was. It, it when, made when like 300 Traction. million. I mean, 300 million like, in is, 80s dollars. Just, just, just as a side note, like a movie like that, I can't imagine a movie like that making that much of a splash and making that much money these days, right? Like, oh, it, heck no. It seems mm-hmm. impossible. Not at all. Yeah, and it's like entirely that market from the, is, is gone. And it's entirely because of the sex appeal, I right? Guess I mean, so, huh? well, Glenn Close was was a fox at the time. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but actually, uh, I wanted to bring up one more thing because I hadn't mentioned it yet. But throughout the previous summer, both the original Double Dragon and the original Street Fighter arcade cabinets were released in arcades. Oh, okay. And uh, okay. so those were slowly filtering through North American, you know, bowling alleys and things like that. And people Street Fighter started One. Seeing them. Yes, the very first Street Fighter, aka Fighting Street, aka the one that you had to punch really hard to. In yeah. order to punch really mm-hmm. hard if you were lucky enough to find that type of cabinet that was pressure sensitive. Yeah, I've always wanted to try that. Like, have you ever seen those, Ricardo? Which ones? Oh, the ones like, you have to punch? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Like the, like the actual cabinet, you, you, there's like a little like punching bag thing? Yeah, so a lot, there were some well, it's not versions. Not a punching of- bag, it like had two big pads, one red, one blue, one mm-hmm. corresponding to punches, one corresponding to kicks, and it could register three separate strengths of intensity based on how hard you hit it down oh. um and then there's a just a normal joystick next to it so yeah anyway street fighter as if street fighter one wasn't already hard enough to control <laughs> <laughs> yeah you so. really feel the struggle of battle when <laughs> you know you're wrestling with the cabinet itself yeah and and clearly there aren't many of those still functioning today because Come on. The act of punching it <laughs> is destroying the very apparatus. In America. <laughs> people, things yeah, I'm, don't last yeah, in America. Ameri- America's the country where people w- will put peanut butter in in the coin slot so other people can't play the game. So, <laughs> so this is fucking America. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my American, god. American like you, say, you say that and the fact that it's so one hundred percent true and literally everyone listening to this has seen it happen. <laughs> it's like it, it's it's depressing in a way. Yeah, it, it's like bubblegum or peanut butter. Some yes, food is, is stuffed into the coin slot. Okay, so I, I know the the gum. Like people putting gum on it, but yeah. peanut butter. I'd never seen that. Like, like are I've these people that, bringing yeah. like a jar of peanut butter? Is it is it in a bag? How are they transporting this peanut butter? So okay, so this is this is my theory because because there there was a family fun golf mini golf near where I I used to live in, in um in Whittier in California, mm-hmm. and uh, that's the arcade I used to go to. And I don't know why, but every once in a while on the pinball machines, you would just see peanut butter stuffed in in the, in the slot, oh my right? Gosh, and I feel like it's probably just some shit kid after school didn't eat his lunch. And he's like, you know, I'm, I'm this is gonna be funny. I'm gonna rub rub the peanut butter in my sandwich in the slot because fuck pinball. Actually, I think it was the away. planters boys. They were trying to send a message. <laughs> <laughs> the, the planters brigade mafia. They were they were with the monocles. The yeah. <laughs> This is planner's turf. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Get, is this a Star your, Trek podcast? Get your almonds out of here. This is peanut turf. <laughs> yeah, see? Anyway, history's over. Yeah, no yeah. nuts, only yeah. legumes. Yeah. There was, in 1987, I will say, as the drugs are of this podcast. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. By the way, I, I will say, full disclosure, all three of these episodes, first one, I enjoyed a nice, nice, look, California has legal marijuana. All right. So that's all I'll say. It does. And, yeah. and uh, for the second episode, I tried uh, a nice um, refreshing beer uh, or two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. for this one, we're going back to the first episode. Okay. Back to Got enjoying uh, uh, California's best. Sponsored by Ease. Sponsored by Ease. Ease. <laughs> if you don't want to leave your house in these troubled times of a pandemic, <laughs> go ahead. Launch the Ease app or log on to Ease.com and enjoy <laughs> some refreshing medical or legal marijuana thank yeah, you yeah. take it away marvin <laughs> ease, also ease if you want to actually sponsor the podcast we'll change the name to doobie star trek we'll yeah do we'll totally do immediately that. that's fine yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh okay so code of honor this is the this is the racist one and it's the it's the one that makes everyone uncomfortable when talking about the first season i don't know i, I, I might it might be a little too conclusive to just call it the racist one <laughs> You're, you're, you're right. <laughs> not that, uh, n- not that this isn't like probably the worst it got, but you know, it's yeah. elsewhere. It, it, it probably like in a, in my recollection of the series, it probably is the worst episode. But yeah. Anyway, Ricardo, having watched the episode, could you please give us a rundown? Okay, I'm gonna give happened. you the quick the quick rundown. Then we're gonna get to the nitty gritty of it. All First right. of all. Just, just the, like the wide definition of the of, of the episode. Um, when the leader of an alien culture takes romantic interest in Yar, he claims her for his own to to this dismay of his wife, who in turn challenges Tasha to a fight to the death. Yes, um, they classic basically Star Trek, classic, <laughs> uh, classic racist Star Trek. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so in this episode, um, first of all, I want to track where Wesley is. <sighs> Yeah. first first we gotta deal with his business um <laughs> wesley enough. look we're gonna get to the racist shit but where is wesley he's fucking hiding in the speed <laughs> elevator whatever they fucking call it <laughs> and he's like see captain i haven't stepped one foot on the bridge it's like shut the fuck up dude you fucking and and clearly picard's like well i really want to get in fucking in in this do- this doctor's fucking pants. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna let this fucking idiot kid oh, who knows that, it all. Okay, onto you the just bridge. solved a problem for me because I always wondered what is his motivation yeah. for letting Wesley on the bridge at this point in time. He's trying to fuck Doctor Crusher. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So it's either that or your original theory that where he feels some sort of guilt towards this possibility that he might be his own son. Yeah. Yeah. Because even his crew is like, sir. Yeah, like, it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but uh, but weirdly, Riker Riker's like, ah, eh, fuck it. And then like it, he keeps letting it happen. Well, like at the at the well, end the of the best episode, part is that Riker at the beginning when yeah. when he sees Wesley immediately goes, "Don't worry, sir, I'll get yeah, him out of the yeah. bridge I'll, right okay, away." Yeah, the Picard the, says no, yeah. and Riker sounds so indignant when he's like, "No." 
Yeah. <laughs> what do you yeah, mean yeah, no? Yeah, yeah. I'm about to toss this bastard yeah. out there. You walk. warned you warned me in our first meeting that you yeah. would fuck up any kid you see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just I'm, trying to protect all parties involved here. I'm trying to get him out of here before you start kicking the shit out of him. Uh and and he's he's headed towards Wesley and he's just about to backslap him back into the elevator. And and uh, and he's like, no, l- let him be. And then at, by the end of the episode, we we get back to Wesley and he's sitting in fucking someone's seat. Fucking notorious seat stealer, fucking Wesley Crusher, <laughs> just habitually that. line stepping on people's seats. Uh, yeah. He's just sitting there pushing buttons. God knows to what. I, I, can you imagine this? What's the equivalent? Like, like they're in, in a naval ship that has yeah. also, uh, that that's traveling with civilians, and they just let this fucking bitch ass fucking teenager just show up and <laughs> touch buttons on the fucking deck. <laughs> And, okay, I, and, and I like to I like to think they gave him a console that does nothing. Like you know how when you're like you're playing games with like your cousin or something, and then you're right. They're, yeah, you're you, give like him the remote, you give him the remote that doesn't work or the one yeah, with no exactly. batteries. Yeah, he's just pushing yeah. these buttons and things happen. And Wesley's like, "Ooh, I'm helping." Wait, and and the thing that we all need to keep in mind here is that in the very episode previous. Wesley fucking took over the yeah, whole ship yeah. and endangered everyone's lives. The fact that there's no repercussions for that is shocking. He should have started this episode <laughs> like, in the brig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have started it. This is how the episode or, should have started. Or, Let me or, tell or you, Picard no, should have Picard should have responded when 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 Beverly was saying maybe he should be on the bridge with. Do you remember the last time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He fucking hijack. He ca- started a mutiny. Like why? Why this would is, I let him back in any control ever again? This is like, how. This is how the episode should have started. Just like fucking Rambo, First Blood Part Two starts. <laughs> Wesley is fucking crushing rocks in some weird fucking <laughs> weird prison, dude. <laughs> he's just sweaty as shit. And fucking Luke comes up and he's like, "Hey, Wesley, I have a mission for you." <laughs> he's like he's like full grown Wesley Crusher, <laughs> but he's crushing rocks. Um, and they pull him out of jail to do this, a suicide mission. Uh, but no, <laughs> this kid's running free, and he just took he took hostages in the last episode, and now he's yeah. yeah he he's wanted for war crimes in in in, <laughs> in certain planets, and he's just walking around free. <laughs> oh, can I can I come onto the bridge? Fucking idiot! And then and by the end, Riker's like. Uh, Riker like invites him in like Picard comes back in from the, the planet the fucking racist planet well no yeah. sorry enter the people of the enterprise are the racist pieces of shit uh, <laughs> the people of the planet are the sexist pieces of shit and uh, <laughs> he comes back from the planet and he he's gonna kick out Wesley again but like he's like no 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 he's cool he's just pushing buttons let him be um <laughs> You He's know? just sitting next to the blind guy. Yeah, taking over a fucking <laughs> data seat. That's what you a know? great way to start. Like the the two people at the front of the bridge is a blind person and a child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imagine, imagine like those dudes from that planet had. Well, they actually do walk onto the deck. I forgot about that. They walk onto the deck by the end of the episode, and mm. there's a kid and a blind dude. Just flying the ship, and they're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Let's well, get they off don't bat of this an sh- eyelash at that. But no, they were no. like, "Whoa, a woman in security officer!" Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. Right. Here's here's the yeah. clip where they're like freaking out. These are my officers, my second in command, Commander William Riker, ship's counselor Deanna Troy, and my security officer, Lieutenant Natasha Yar. A woman, <laughs> your chief of security. Yes, Lieutenant, that is her expertise. (laughs) Oh, God. I am honored to meet your officers. This is my secondary, Hagan, a sample of the vaccine. My duty, Lieutenant. I'm sorry, but I'm required to inspect... Out of my way, woman. (laughs) (laughs) How interesting. He's just flipped her. May we prove yeah. as surprising to you. All yeah, impressive so- <laughs> 80s TV martial arts were flipping. <laughs> yeah, it's a, um, well, it's the safest stunt. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to that hard floor. Um, one thing that I noticed, I don't know if you guys noticed it on this viewing, but um, right before the, um, the what's his name? What's the, the leader of that planet? Lutan. 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 Mm-hmm. Right before yeah. Lutan and his, and his folk. Oh, it sounds like Wu-Tang. Um, right before the Lu Tang right clan, Wu-Tang, yeah. uh, and, and let's just call them Wu Tang. I like yeah. that better. Lu- the Lu Tang yeah. clan, uh, right before the Lu Tang <laughs> clan show up to, into the the Enterprise, 
So Luke Picard comes into the the cargo bay. Oh, and actually, on the sorry, floor, sorry, sorry. I'm going to stop you real quick, real quick. Yes. Did okay. everyone catch the bit of foreshadowing? The universe, universe foreshadowing in that that cargo bay had a very conspicuous X Men logo on the yes, on the floor. Yes, that's what I was. <laughs> oh, that's what, that's what I'm going to. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to mention. <laughs> when where they appear is an X. Is a perfect X with a circle over it around it. That's like, true. A perfect X Men X. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like <laughs> the black X over like with a red background. It even I think it yeah. even had a damn yellow border. Maybe it did. It did. It did. It did. And uh, yeah, there you go. The the fate of Patrick Stewart was sealed. That's mm-hmm. the, that's the first thing that I thought when I watched that scene. I was like, "God damn, X Men! This guy's a fucking <laughs> X Men. Uh, he's walking around. This is before he had a wheelchair." Um, and then uh, an- another X Men Easter egg, but not really because they didn't know that there was going to be <laughs> he was going to be an X Men. <laughs> is the where he has the uh, where Yar has the fight sim- simulation and she oh, she yeah. fights the dude. I don't know why she puts on the top of the key but not the bottom. I, I never I, I don't get that. She's like, <laughs> you gotta she's have your shiny pants, dress shoes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's I'll, like, look, I I'm will, gonna give you okay, a demo. So I get why actually. So there's a there's a minor explanation. Um, for for combat uh, martial arts like well Aikido or Judo, the gi is actually because the martial art is based around grabbing the gi. Oh, like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu kind of. Yeah, so it's actually based on the clothing. So that's why she wears it because you have to actually have the clothing on for a lot of the moves to even work. Oh, okay. um, yes, yeah, so, but that's why she doesn't need to put on pants because she's already wearing pants or whatever. My, Good my, okay, but my my response to that is, well, what if you're fighting a shirtless man or a yeah, woman? Yeah, th- that's like, why like, Aikido and <laughs> that's why like the strict combat versions of those sports aren't very yeah. useful. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah, fact, right. it it would really throw you off if you're fighting a. But a shirtless woman. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> no, let's not fight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want, I don't know. I, I'm out. You know, and he, I, he I, I, I just can't, we can't, The we're going to get into lots of issues yeah, and problems. There's of, the legalities of this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> like, speaking of that Aikido simulation, like at first the, the uh, Lu Tan's like, you can create people without a soul. And then, <laughs> and then Taj is like, it's not a real person, Lu Tan. Not, and I'm yeah. like, as soon as she said, I'm like, can we get that in writing? <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee oh. that you're not going to think the same eventually. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, Foreshadowing. So, oh, interesting. <laughs> but this room is very much like the, um, that room. I forget what, what it's called. Danger in room. X-Men. Danger room. That, yeah. It's the, kind of, it has the same feeling to it. Oh, yeah. definitely. Um, so that's the, that's the premise is that initially they need the vaccine. So then they come aboard. Yeah. But then and now, yeah. That now vaccine it's like really is weird, so really like thoroughly like cock blocked in, in the plot writing it's like oh well the, as soon as we tried to replicate this vaccine it just didn't work anymore yeah well, why exactly. not? Got, got deadly. sometimes replicators are great but sometimes they're just shit yeah, yeah. And they just yeah. don't <laughs> it's like are you telling me that the society that you are are like boldly claiming is is more primitive than your own and less technologically advanced than you why can't you replicate their vaccine <sighs> Yeah, it. Why this, do they have episode, transport technology? I, yeah, this episode they, is <laughs> full of horrible contradictions. Like this is a this is not a very well thought out episode. But Ricardo, sorry, continue. No, so in this episode, so Luton, uh, Lutan, sorry, Lutan, the Lutan clan, um, mm-hmm. they are. They say, "Hey, want to see the demo? I heard there's a king of the demo here that does a lot of Aikido." want to see it <laughs> and so so they go to the the, the thing but look the card he says it does a lot of things and it, <laughs> it, came, it came off like like hey you can fuck in there dude and, and it's, it's yeah, safe totally it's safe yeah it's absolutely safe. Well, i i imagine it's <laughs> actually probably like an actual part of like like okay for example so Klingon, not Klingons, uh, Vulcans go through a thing called a pon far. Yes. Um, so, so like Vulcans are very like logical and, and supposed to be emotionless, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that happens with Vulcans is that all that sexual urge builds up and they got to do something with it. So every decade, uh, they just go on a crazy fucking spree. And that's it a, like that's every a pon- seven years or something. Something, yeah, some, some, some time amount of time they do a pond far. Oh, I think what I think it was actually in Voyager. Um, Tuvok goes through his pond far, but he's stranded and there are no Vulcans to fuck. Uh-oh. So they create a Vulcan simulation in, in the, the, the holodeck. He just goes on a fucking spree in there, I believe. 
if I remember correctly. Yeah. So so it's it's totally a sanctioned thing. Oh, it's okay. funny that you bring holiday. up Ponfars in in regards to this because the like the Ponfar that put Spock into a frenzy is what yeah, resulted in like the that famous, fight to yeah. the death. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Yeah. You're fight. you're half expecting that music to play in in this one's battle. Exactly. Too, yeah. Did. I was yeah, about to bring never, that up. It's like yeah. it feels like kind of an echo of that sort of. I don't know the, the fight to the death. Like it, it's, it feels like it was just kind of way like, dumber remember? though. Remember that? <laughs> like, like, it, like that. The the original series version of that fight already looked kind of awkward, but they managed to make it look even more horribly awkward. In this <laughs> oh, episode. it's so good. <laughs> By being anyway, so we're getting terrible. really, really ahead of ourselves. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. no. If, so I, I'm glad this is information that I need. Uh, just personally, uh, so they do use the holiday. <laughs> they later. use they use the holiday Holodeck. for orgies. <laughs> the, the 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 holy deck uh to really get down uh good to know because that's what that's what they are they they're hinting at like it's just like it, it could do a lot <laughs> yeah, of he's, he's, he's going like hey yeah. just to seal the deal yeah. i mean maybe <laughs> yeah what are you if what do you what kind of shit are you guys into <laughs> <laughs> um and and so she she shows him the demo and then like this dude's in love like and then and then they cut to like uh diana troy and they're like, I sense a lot of like, basically, she's like, these guys are fucking horny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are horny as shit. And they oh, I think, sorry. One thing I think we should mention is, is that uh, we, have, we haven't gotten across the fact uh, the entire planet is black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> right, all right. these things where they're like primitive and stealing white women and <laughs> like, yeah, all, all these like weird tribal customs. It's quite weird and problematic. Yeah, being- probably not just in hindsight, but probably at the time as well. Oh, yeah. But they, kept, but they went along with it anyway, which is really odd. Yeah, uh, it's weird. Like, they're like, hey, this planet, the, actually, the, this, uh, this African-American planet is going to steal this white woman. And, yeah. and they're like, OK, well, all right, well, let's let's film it. It's I'm glad you brought it back around to that because I wanted to mention this because one of the first things you hear about this race of people before you see any of them is that they call them. Oh, they're very closely humanoid. Yeah, it's such a weird way to but phrase. But then, it. when you actually see them, they are clearly one hundred percent humanoid. The only thing yep, that's different yep. about them is that they're black. Yep, yeah. Yep. Also, they have like all the men have like a scar on their face. Who cares but, about the scar? But but you don't even know if that's like a <laughs> cultural thing. You know, is yeah. it cultural Probably, or genetic? Yeah, you, know? you, you don't, don't know. even know. Yeah, yeah. They're clearly it's dudes. Like, like when when I when I they're first just saw fucking it, dudes. It's like when I first saw it, I was like, if they tried to make like a space Wakanda in the 80s, this is what it would be. Where it's just like, ah, what Uh, what is what is Africa? Yeah, Yeah. I guess this is space Africa. Let's just put this together. And it's Um, just they did do a good job. So like there's a scene where they're like they come over. So 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 uh, uh, Yar has been abducted and they go down to the planet to see what's going on. And they're having like little dinner or fucking lunch and like you could see a sunset going down it's a sound stage clearly but it's really well done because like the back feels like the sun's going down so like it's like well, it's like beautiful. a reddish sky yeah. it looks really nice yeah it's really yeah, well they, they, done yeah and in the blu-rays it like the color is super rich and it looks really nice oh, wow. so yeah it's, like, i think they, it's very important to v- be very clear about what is well done yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 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 it looks like you're in a jungle, like in a jungle like environment, um, right? And it is, I mean, for for it being a soundstage, it looks fucking awesome. This is one of the better built sets. The last episode, we saw some shitty fucking sets, mm. um, <laughs> but this Don't one worry, was you'll actually, see some more. Oh, really? It's, it's Star Trek. So yeah. shitty sets and are wait, coming. They're they're coming. Wait it. Wait until you see that barrel fall. <laughs> oh <Ooh>, yeah. <laughs> or even um, the very next episode. I guess so, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's coming. Yeah. Anyway, um, and then and then so like so this this group of people this this planet it's very weird because like so they first of all they're really horny they they're <laughs> kind of they're kind of sexist but also like the women hold all the power because they own all the land but then like you could have a lot of it's really weird like then you could have many wives so that way you own more land. But then, like fucking, or it seems like it seems like the wives can have multiple husbands, and then that's what happens. That, well, the, and, and so way, wealth is land. Like right? he calls his wife his first one, as though they're 
it, that's they're implying true. second and third ones. Yeah, so that implies that everyone is polygamous. So yeah, I guess it, so. Yeah. Hmm. That's and weird. then at the, end, makes... at the end, so like, so like, she uh, she wants to challenge Yar to fight to the death uh, because for for she they want she wants to be the the number one wife, and mm. this dude wants to take Yar as his number one. And um, there's a lot of number ones. So is Riker's number one? Like, yes. Luke, <laughs> like, like Luke Picard is going to fight somebody? You know, like uh-huh. this is my number one, you bitch. Um, <laughs> and they're going to fight to the death to be the number one wife. But it's like you own all the land. Why do you have to fight? Let her. She doesn't own any land. She's on a fucking spaceship. Um, it make yeah. It makes the politics really confusing. Like I don't quite. And the understand kicker on all it. that is that they keep on they keep on trying to imply that this is reminiscent of how you know older human civilization was, but it's like who was like this who had this yeah. setup i mean i mean we're not history experts so i guess there's not, some weird obscure yeah. culture that did that but like okay dan and i are korean i don't think koreans ever did that right that doesn't sound right i am or, not an authority on korean history yeah <laughs> or, i don't think i don't think china or japan ever did that either i think it was it was just all men <laughs> so yeah uh, but then and like warlords but then like I don't know what culture like I know there is there is this there is this island culture where um uh, women it was it was a matriarchal society and it was like considered that uh women are actually like the source of like babies to the point where like they thought like when people have sex it's not about the man giving sperm it's about the man opening up the woman for like a spirit to enter her to make the baby but that's like a very obscure culture i don't even remember the name of that culture so i, I don't know i don't know what they're in i don't fact, know what you probably just made it up yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean all, there's also the possibility that deanna troy just doesn't know what she's talking about yeah, there yeah. You go. <laughs> half the time i think she's just making shit up like she's like yeah, yeah. this is she's, this, she's, uh, like, she's like, a counselor but yeah. like you know what she's, everything she says is so general yeah like, 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 like a real so therapist good at a knowing <laughs> at like ha- having a knowing tone while saying things yeah yeah she's like she's like a very like general therapist like ricardo said um <laughs> Deanna, Deanna troy is like like a therapist that you that you go to the therapist long enough and you're like this person has no fucking idea what's going on. Yeah. Like they're just really, they're really just, I'm paying them to listen to me. No actual fucking advice. No fucking actual <laughs> advice. Just a professional or, or, listener. Yeah. Or if it's like, you've gone to a therapist long enough that you know exactly what they're going to say in response <laughs> to what you've said. And you go, I already, it's like, like those, uh, those Asian kids who've been taught to use an abacus their whole life. And then the instructor takes the abacus away and all they have to do is move their hands and they still get the same thing. Yeah. That's eventually what interacting with yeah. a therapist becomes yeah. like. It's like, I yeah. I know, I, if I just sit on a couch, I just, all of the therapy just happens magically yeah. and I'll leave. Hey man, you know, I that's it. when their work is done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what I, I feel like is happening here. Like she's like, look, these guys want to fuck and they just want to own land and we're kind of racist, but I'm not going to tell you guys that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, th- this episode was, uh, so far the, the first two I've watched great. They're fun. There is something interesting about them. This one, I really, even at the end of the episode, I was like, what the fuck was the point? Like that they, fo- <laughs> that they follow the prime directive. Who the fuck gives a shit, dude. Okay. They, and they let this fucking w- Wesley on the fucking bridge. Fuck yeah. dude. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause like, f- okay. First of all, Wesley is not even a plot point. It's yeah, just like no. a thing that happens in the background just to yeah. get Wesley on the bridge. Yeah. So it's clear that just, it's just a pushing of the Wesley agenda, which is really annoying. Who, um, who do you think? Who do you think? Okay. Let's fucking, before you get to your point, let's talk about what, what did Wesley, I mean, Will, Will Wheaton have on? Why do they want him on the fucking bridge? I don't understand. Because he's at the Gene Roddenberry, like, insert. Oh, like, my it's, God. It's supposed to be, like, as far as I understand it, it's, like, Gene Roddenberry. Like, he's a, he's apparently, like, a reflection of Gene Roddenberry as a child. So, so he's, 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 he was annoying It was a child? <laughs> possibly i don't know i've heard a lot of different theories but that's one prevailing theory is that it's just gene roddenberry 
having that. The other thing I've heard is that he wanted to like be able to reach to like a younger audience. So like he thought like a kid insert, you know, like Jackie Chan Adventures had Jade Chan, like his yeah. knee oh, yeah, sidekick. It's like a classic, yeah. like, you know, yeah. give them someone they can really. I mean, that's what Robin was even. And yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And yeah, a Scrappy yeah, Doo and all those things. Yeah, look at that. The Scrappy Doo turned out fantastic. So yeah, everyone loves Scrappy. Da 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 da. Puppy power. Yeah, that's, anyone? that's 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 anyone? that's a thing that everyone loves. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everyone, 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 everyone who showed everyone up in the Scooby Doo movie written by James Gunn and he turned into a huge villain. Oh, I didn't oh, know that's, that's right. What that's happened. right. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah that, I didn't realize. That oh man, yeah. I never seen that movie. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good job, James. Spoiler, spoiler alert. Oh yeah. Nice going, yeah. Marvin. <laughs> Spoiler um, yeah. alert, don't watch Scooby Doo. <laughs> 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 so like I still don't understand. Like this was one of the episodes where like I'm like, I, I don't get what this is. Why, why did we have to watch this episode? This is a stupid <laughs> episode. Just it just it just really served to get Wesley on the fucking bridge. Well, also y- so you mentioned the prime directive, right? Yeah. That's, and I think that's, that's the, the thing first I wanted. time it's been like uh explicitly invoked. In TNG. Yes, yeah, yes. It's yes. the first time it came up. And it's like so the problem with the Prime Directive is that, believe it or not, it's actually never canonically laid out what the actual Prime Directive is in any of the shows or movies. Huh. Like No one actually says, here is the Prime Directive. The Prime Directive is blah, 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 blah. So I the feel only like thing- there is supplemental material that would define it for us. We're just not in enough to know. Yes, there is. There's non-canonical material that like lays it out more clearly, but it's technically non-canonical. So we can't like infer that to be exactly what it is. Listeners, All correct we- him. <laughs> well, if, it, if, 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 it is, if I'm wrong, please, I'm probably wrong about hundreds of things about this show. So please feel free to yeah, correct like me the, if I'm the, wrong. This is, we are listener. standing on a platform of butter and jelly. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but so, so generally what people can gather from the prime directive or what it's about is from the context in which it's invoked. Mm-hmm. And generally it's understood to be don't interfere with the natural evolution of an indigenous culture, right? So basically, mm-hmm. if it's a still developing culture and they don't have technology that's on the level of the Federation, just observe them from a distance, don't interfere, don't change the belief system, et cetera, right? Just let them keep evolving until mm-hmm. usually the de facto event is that they invent warp travel. Because right. that means they can travel from planet to like solar system to solar system and like because that that's what happens in Star Trek First Contact, the movie. That's why that's how the Vulcans discovered Earth oh. is that the the first Star Trek guy <laughs> uh, created a warp drive and they detected the warp signal. Yeah, John so Vulcans Star Trek. were like, yeah, Johnny Star Trek uh, did a warp drive, warp jump, uh, and then the Vulcans were passing by and they're going like, what the hell is that? And they came by and they're like, oh, you guys are here. So that's that. But here is like jumping ahead a little bit um, because like Tasha Yar gets kidnapped, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the whole premise is supposed to be that we have to go through their weird cultural bullshit of Tosh asking for Tasha Yar to come back. And then, you know, he invokes that thing of wanting her to be her first one. So a fight challenge is proposed that Tasha Yar has to be involved in in order to not break the prime directive. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any sense because. Yeah. The prime directive is supposed to be for a developing indigenous culture you haven't had contact with. We're asking them for a vaccine. In, yeah, in, in yeah. at least one respect, they are more advanced than the Federation. Like they already clearly have warp the, the teleportation technology. I mean, it stands to read and they and they can transport onto their spaceship. It stands to reason they probably have some sort of spaceship travel as well. Even if they don't, that's the fact that they can they were allowed to teleport onto your spaceship in the first place suggests that we're already interacting with them. So I don't understand why the prime directive was invoked here. Like I, I, they probably like, if you wanted to make it work for the story, Picard probably should have just been like, we don't want to ruin diplomatic relations with Lutan. Like that might be, but that's not what he says. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't he, say that, but it always feels like that's more the motivation of what's going on. Cause it's like, we don't want to piss them off. We still on the hook for needing this vaccine. And yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, it's odd. I just don't know. I feel like the only reason it was brought up is because like, they're probably like, well, we're four episodes in and we still haven't said the word prime directive. So <laughs> <laughs> we got to say it. We got to say it. Actually, um, I really I f- love the part, the part where uh, Deanna says, you know, 
things would be so much simpler if it if how simple things would be if it weren't for the prime directive and yeah, Epic it's like, like, like <laughs> you don't believe how much i want to ice all of these motherfuckers right now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the more and more I think about it, you're right. Like this is this is space Wakanda because like the, <laughs> the, the vibranium is the vaccine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. they have advanced. They look primitive at glance, but their technology is way more advanced than they they lead on. It's you know. just unobtainium again. Yep. Unobtainium. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. God. oh my isn't god! A, isn't an unobtainium? Uh, isn't it an Avatar? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, unobtainium is, is just because it's supposed to be the, like, I can't, never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, let's, let's not do that That's here. the best, that's the best, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Fuck you just did exactly it. what Fuck. Picard did. It's like, well, yeah. I don't need to be ranting to oh, people. Oh, man. That's okay. <laughs> when we get there, I have the clip ready because that's my favorite part of the episode. <laughs> Picard is actually my favorite part of this episode. Oh, because, yeah. Because Picard, it's unfortunate. It's supposed to be about Tasha Yar, right? But yeah, she kind yeah. of, after she gets kidnapped, she kind of gets pushed to the side. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of the best lines actually come from Picard. And it's actually Picard's first time really shining as the diplomat he'll will get to know him as you know because in the th- throughout the course of the series you, as you'll see like he becomes like the elder statesman and the heart and soul of what the federation stands for right yeah. and he starts doing that here probably it's probably the one major positive of the episode is that you see how picard can expertly navigate like weird customs and diplomatic restrictions and still come out on top because he's just a very smart guy and not even you know? perfectly because there are there are moments where he like kind of his facade cracks a bit or he's a little prickly or like he, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, play yeah. he plays a, he toes a very fine line where he's like nearly offending them like a lot of times especially when they first get down to the planet granted granted he did they did just kidnap one of his no, exactly exactly so it's so. like he was understandably upset yeah and you know that's yeah. That's one of the things I like about Picard is that like the thing that tends to make him genuinely upset more than anything is if any one of his crew members are put in harm's way. Yeah, that's, that's when he like starts to get really mad. That's like the classic like noble captain trait The Ed like yeah. the same thing happened with Edward James Olmos in BSG. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Ricardo. Please. Um. All right. So uh, he's kind of being diplomatic, but you're right. This episode would have been a lot better if they would have concentrated on yar being like like look like we don't give a shit about whether somebody's a dude or 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 a woman like she's she's the fucking security officer fucking deal with it you fucking bitch and (laughs) they don't do that they don't they're they're, they get into some weird like racist politics and then they 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 have to fake this lady's death yar (laughs) kills this lady in this weird like fighting to the death ring that like has like weird lights that like will zap you. And then yeah. like they have like a, a glove with nails that are, that have like poison a, on the tips. Yeah. They call that the stinger. The they, stinger. they don't let you use that no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a dangerous jungle gym. Essentially. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I called it a, 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 a laser stripper jungle gym in my notes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's like those, have you guys seen a like professional tag? Like, it no, feels no. like one of the. Oh yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know, like, I know what you're talking t- about. Type in, type in professional tag on okay. like YouTube, and you'll see like these weird like obstacle courses. It's where like free running parkour play. tag. Yeah, yeah, and it oh, looks like I it see. looks like a mean, mini version of like the obstacle course because you're like there's a lot of like it, it's just a, a weird stage, mm-hmm. but it's very. Oh man, I wish they moved like that in the show though. That yeah, would have been cool. <laughs> really fast parkour. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then instead and then, of just like wildly flailing, yeah, like trying to poke someone. You know, yeah. <laughs> and and the Yara finally like pokes her in the back, and well, she, before like, that happens, like it, it's funny because like, accidentally the, the, kill it, a man. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It flies I off. That. I forget that. It flies off. It fly, off. If, yeah, it flies into that guy. Like, every, okay, first of all, everyone's just clicking sticks in the middle yeah. of the fight, right? So like, no, no, no. it's like they're thunder sticks. And the best part yeah. is like before any of this happens at the beginning of the fight, they say there will be no interruptions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. none. Yeah. yeah. None, no none one, one. Until, no interruption <laughs> until someone's dead. Yeah, and, and, and they start with the sticks. And they play the sticks. So that's um, fine. That's that's their version of the thunder sticks. And then the glove flies off. 
and it lands On the onto chest. the guy. And yeah. he doesn't, apparently he doesn't feel it. Like, he doesn't feel it go through, like, <laughs> he seems so skin. bewildered and confused. Yeah, and he's like, what the fuck is this? Why would th- why would she do this to me? Why would she throw her glove? Like, and then yeah, like, he, like, takes the this. glove and is going to hand it back to her. And he's yeah. like, oh my god, I've been fucking stabbed. Pay like I'm gonna die. Bucks and then for these <laughs> tickets. <laughs> yeah. These and are he dies. Seats. And he, he dies. dies. Yeah. They and they carry him off, and everyone's like, "Oh, okay." And they start playing the thunder sticks again. <laughs> yeah, like nothing, like nothing matters. You know, um, like give her back the glove, even though we said we she, shouldn't interrupt the fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Technically, she lost the glove. She doesn't get it back, and she's screwed. But no, yeah. they, give her, they give her back the glove, and then uh, at one point, like she's in danger of losing the the, the, the not Yar, the challenger, and this, the dude who's. Yeah, the dude who's like second in command, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one of the Lutan clan. Uh, he's like, he's like, he's like, w-. he's like, oh, be careful, Arena, and and like you're like, what the fuck? Like, does 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 he like her? What? Why, why is he so concerned? And then uh, Yara stabs her in the back and and uh, immediately jumps on her body, and they get teleported out of there, back to mm-hmm. the back to the Enterprise, and uh, Doctor Crusher uh, like fixes her. Well, she's like, oh, her, her body is already cold she's dead yeah. and so she's she's dead but they bring her back somehow you know and then old lutan and the crew they show up on the enterprise and they're like all right i guess uh you know um i guess everything's fine now because they fought to the death well where's my wife i want to marry uh yar and ah, fuck dude this episode <laughs> was fucking hard to watch man <laughs> and then and then the, and then he's like what the fuck my my wife is alive, and then you're like, oh yeah, that's right. He just wanted the land. He wanted her to die. This this is all a setup. Why don't you just kill her, dude? Why did you just? <laughs> why did you set this whole like big old thing to to get Yara to kill her? Why didn't you just kill her from the beginning? Uh, yeah. And also, at, at the end of the day, why do you want Yara? She doesn't own any fucking land. Well, I think I think the it's confusing, but I believe the ploy is that he doesn't actually want Yar. He just wanted to make his wife jealous. To have fight. her die in an honorable way, well, my re- so that he will inherit the land. I actually read that differently. I think I think the ploy is that uh, he was more physically attracted to Yar, and so she wanted he wanted to keep Yar as his first one. But um, if Yarina had died in combat, then Yar would have inherited her shit. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. I see. Yeah, that makes yeah. that makes sense. But th- either it, way, it's, he's yeah. winning. That's why. That's why Picard has a conversation exactly. where he's like, "Either way, it's you win." win. win. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the while, yeah. you know, Lutan's like, "Oh, I don't care about women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they're objects." Uh, oh my yeah. god! And then and then he, he's fucking offended that she's still alive. And they're like, "Dude, we got you in your, in, on a technicality, dude." Because she fucking died. She died, and we brought her back from the dead. That's not how that works. And like, no doctor he's go- so yeah. honorable that he just yeah. takes it. He's like, well, <laughs> code uh, of he, honor. Yeah, he's like, he's like, <laughs> Picard's like, them's the rules. Sorry, and and then That's your like, honor, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and Lutan's like, well, you got me there. Okay, I'm gonna go. Bye. <laughs> Well, no, and no, then, he'll he'll return as one of her bitches. That's right. That's right. And then she she's like, well, well, this dude it was the only one who cared for me, so I'm now I'm, I like this guy now. And I'm like, what's going on, man? Like, so now, like, so now he's the, he's the guy who, who he's the wealthiest guy on the planet now. Uh, it was, okay, it was, it's like for such a monumental commitment of resources, she's very flippant about just giving away her power. Yeah, because like yeah, it's yeah, Urena has. So culture. little self respect. It, it, it seems like, yeah, it's, it's insane because like, because like, it seems like the way this culture works is that women have the power, and then what I'm like, what I what I seem like it's going on is that they have the power until they get married. So the act of getting married is like a huge commitment for them. But she just does it on the flip with this guy that just called her. Maybe he was just just a worried guy, you know? Maybe he's like, oh, I actually don't care for you very much. I'm just yeah. don't like seeing people fight. Yeah, you know, like, I, I don't you know. like my people dying. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. but but this is interesting because at first she's like, well, well, I don't like him having a first wife. I'm going to fight to the death because I love him so much that I I want I want my honor and like all this bullshit. But then at the end, she like flip flops very easily. Like, well, I'm still alive, but no, no, I want this guy. 
Like you were just willing to fight to the death, like literally yeah, 10 like minutes the crazy ago. Thing what to happened me is that like the ploy, like the ploy as we now understand it is obvious from the get go. It's like, obviously they are to fight to the death. And like he, he declared his infidelity in front of her. And she yeah. was, <laughs> and she was all like, no, no, like you're not taking my man. And that was like, I don't know. It's like, it's clear that he doesn't care for her anymore. So why is she so surprised? This is, this was like the intergalactic Maury Povich show. Yes. Like, <laughs> like Lutan. Totally. Has a new wife. What do you have to say about this? <laughs> well, fuck that. I'm going to fight her to the death. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Yeah, well, here we've got a big surprise for you. Surprise. Here's Jean Luc Picard. <laughs> He's going. And then Jean Luc's like, yeah. He, he walks in with crowd. he walks in with the death certificate. Yeah. He's like, yeah. she was dead. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you see that now, guy like put his fist near his mouth, like. Ooh. <laughs> now, now, Luke, we have the paternity test. <laughs> you are not. Wesley Crusher's father. <laughs> and he jumps in fucking joy. Q guy. It's Riker. I would watch that that episode of Star Trek. <laughs> oh man. The one the one where John Luke Picard is worried about being a father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have the, another guy who's like, fuck, it's probably me. And they go to him and it's not him either. <laughs> it's Riker. He's he's like, it could be me. It could be me. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you, just... never, you never fucks a doctor, dude. And you just <laughs> met her. Wesley was full grown when you met her, you idiot. He's like, I don't know. You can't, you can't yeah. rule it out. Can't rule it out. I, I, I might have, have been I, I might have been drunk in time traveling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're probably, you know, you in know, the world of Star Trek, that's actually not super unlikely. Yeah, they probably yeah, had happen. they had probably <laughs> had sex while slingshotting around a moon yeah, yeah. <laughs> dilated there was a weird, time yeah yeah, yeah 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 oh man this episode um not very good <laughs> yeah so i just for some context for why the episode is this way apparently the original premise of the episode was supposed to be that they were a very japanese samurai style i was gonna site. bring that up because i saw that too and it's like well yeah. yeah like you hear all this shit about honor it's like well this sounds like stereotypical racist japanese shit <laughs> <laughs> um and then like but and then apparently in the script itself it was stated okay the con the initial contingent that t transports onto the enterprise is black but when they get to the planet it's all mixed race or so or it's like I, I don't think that they explicitly stated that it was mixed race but the only characters that were explicitly described as black were right right, right yeah, yeah i think that i think you're correct yeah, yeah yeah but but the weird thing is i guess they were like they made two big decisions they were like well let's just make them all black whatever and also while they're black let's put some like space wakanda clothes on them and we'll see how that goes and it just ended up being like, I don't, I feel like, like, like Star Trek is a show that's trying to be progressive, right? True. But mm -hmm. they often don't grasp it. Cause like Gene Roddenberry, he often had this approach where he was trying to be progressive, but sometimes, not just sometimes, a lot of the time it's bumbling and like In terrible end, way to approach it's, it. It's worth remembering that no matter what, these were still, these episodes are still written by a bunch of white dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You're, yeah, that's the perfect way to put it. At the end of the day, it was just a bunch of white dudes trying to pretend that they could write. They could only about, get so yeah. woke. <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah. you know, just have any understanding of what a space African culture might be like. Or why bother with that in the first place? You know, you, <laughs> you say that like there's a proper way for it to be done that everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there, maybe a black person would know, right? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Anyway, the, the, the highlight of this episode to me is that uh, a lot more of Picard's personality tends to come out. Yeah. And there's, mm -hmm. there's, there are these two moments that kind of make the episode at least enjoyable to me, which is, uh, there's the part where Data is trying to explain something to him. And it's, it's this one right here. Let's hear the analysis. It is a highly structured society in which people live by strict codes of honor. For example, what Lutan did is similar to what certain American Indians once did called counting coup. That is from an obscure language known as French. Counting coup. <laughs> Mr. Data. Oh yeah, this. French language for centuries on earth represented civilization. Indeed. But surely, sir. I suggest you drop it, Mr. Data. <laughs> so 
uh, I like that because it's like, yes, Picard is very French. Only that he's, he's not very, at all. Uh, <laughs> Listen to him I know, talk. I, I know he's a he's a very French British man uh, who whose family owns a vineyard in France, but also he's a British man who likes Earl Grey tea. <laughs> so, Bonjour. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's Je the, suis that's Jean Luc Picard. Yeah, exactly. That's the perfect encapsulation of John Luke Picard's culture. <laughs> um, the other but he gets is so that, salty uh, right away. That, that 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 is pretty funny. Yeah, I, I really I really like that that aspect of his personality coming out, where he's just he's like a bit because th- it's a thing that happens uh, in DS Nine as well with uh, D- uh, Benjamin S- Commander Benjamin Sisko. Oh, I thought uh, it was Sisko the Dragon, <laughs> where the, the, could- the Thong Sun guy. Yeah. <laughs> But like, but Cisco is very proud of being from Louisiana and and eating Louisiana food. Like his dad owns like a Creole rest or a Cajun restaurant, I think, which is weird in the world of Star Trek because like there's no more currency, so the the Cajun restaurant is actually like like a preservation restaurant. Oh, so it's really weird. <laughs> yeah, um, and he also likes baseball, and everyone always makes fun of him for liking like a dead sport because no one plays baseball <laughs> in the future. So yeah, so there's there's that scene about him being French, but there's also the scene where, uh, like he has Data and Jordy teleport down to the planet so that they can like examine the weapons for yeah, some reason. Right. Yeah, it feels like padding because it's like like they don't even get the weapon. Like they do all this research and then they show them the weapons and they're like, oh yeah, we'll look at these weapons. So it's like it seems like padding. But when that scene happens, Picard has this speech. With the power of the Enterprise, we could overwhelm this place easily. Just take what we want. I may not understand human humor, sir, but I am a Starfleet Academy graduate. Which means, of course, understanding the Prime Directive, sir. And that is, ironically, what this is about. By our standards, the customs here, their code of honor is the same kind of pompous strutting charades that endangered our own species a few centuries ago we evolved out of it because no one tried to impose their own set of i'm sorry this is becoming a speech you're the captain sir you're entitled Hmm. not entitled to ramble on about something everyone knows so so i like that he already has set a reputation for himself that he just gives random speeches out of nowhere even though this is only the fourth episode yeah i mean like a, this is already the second time he's talked about you know how far humanity has come <laughs> yeah which is a weird way to put it in context of a british man of a <laughs> of a from a country that colonized large portions of africa so <laughs> It's fine. Let's think about it. We 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 civilized. We were civilized. Yeah. <laughs> These fucking uh this episode. Whew. Um. I this so still. If if we're keeping track, Yar still my favorite character. Okay. Uh, cool. Luke Picard is getting interesting. I, I, I'm I'm curious to see. You know, because I mean, I'm I'm just tracking this for the first time. So I. I I've seen some of the movies, but I, I don't remember them. Mm-hmm. Some of the, like, okay. I saw First Contact, but I don't remember anything that and happened. And those are not a very good representation of what Picard is like. Like, yeah, it complete, yeah. is a completely different, like, r- set of writers. So, it's and they a, wrote the, him the like. The cinematic universe version. Yeah, it's we they, they wrote him like an action star when he's clearly not. So, mm, okay. it, it's really okay. weird. Yeah. Um, so I'm, he's interesting. I'm still, I'm still on board. Rikers, uh, uh, clearly like we've, we've said this before, but like, clearly he's the, he's the Kirk of, of this. I have seen the, the Abrams movie. So, uh, he's like the, the handsome young dude. Uh, and, uh, but he's, he hasn't got enough to do yet. Yeah. Uh, In the last episode he did a little bit but but not too much in this one he nearly had um, something to do in this episode yeah, yeah, it was like hey yeah. you're not going down there you might be in danger and <laughs> yeah then- <laughs> yeah i do like that that detail came back yeah that's, no, yeah, uh, that's the, a good callback yeah and then yeah and i also i also like that when he is put in command of the bridge he's very nervous yeah yeah, yeah. like <laughs> like like he's, he's like, oh. like he, he calls over i think oh yeah he brings crusher over because he's like I just got a message about this vaccine. What does this mean? I don't know what this means. Like, and he's like very nervous about it because he's like, yeah. it's, I think it's a good detail. Cause it's like, he's not quite, he, his ambition is to become a captain. And, uh, mm-hmm. I think it's sort of like just pointing at the fact that like, he's not quite ready yet. Like he's yeah. okay with being a commander, 
but when he's actually in charge, he's uh like fucking fucking Worf probably was better in charge in the first episode because he was like, yes, I'll do it. And then, you know, <laughs> to command of the of the saucer section. Like we're starting to see more of Riker's signature, like sly grin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, after, yeah. Like as, we, we as soon as he like pipes up about like, hey, I'm, I'm going to I'm not letting you go down there. And everyone like kind of reassures him of like, well, actually, he's going to be a guest of honor and not going to do that. It's totally against their customs. And he's like, well, all right. But if you get hurt. <laughs> Ooh, you, like, he turns all screwball. <laughs> like he, he, suddenly he's not serious at all. He's all smiling. Yeah. 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 Um, he, and, and like when Picard gets back and he like tells him like he basically gives him a smirk like yeah he this guy is cool this guy is cool we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> see more of this guy and he and the smirk he gives like uh is interesting but still I don't want Gwyth to crush her back. Fuck yeah. Shit, if it makes dude. you feel any better, he'll um, give everyone that sly smile eventually. Okay. 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 I I I don't want him to to run out of it yeah. and he waste it all on Wesley Crusher. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's plenty more. But where this that is came interesting. From. Okay, okay. Well, it's interesting too because like in the first episode we had like Wesley going like, "Hey, my mom's single, dude. If you want to fuck her," <laughs> and then and then but then then we find out. Well, I, you guys know more of this, but uh, that Luke, my, I don't know, might be his dad. Maybe I don't know, or maybe he like. <sighs> There's some deep shit going on. <laughs> with uh, with Doctor Crusher and Luke, I think. Oh, you know what? Like I said, I said it once and I said it again. I think he got lonely. He fucked her one night, but she was already <laughs> married. And Wesley's his kid, but there's some deep, deep like guilt because uh, it's like that Johnny Cash song. Like, hey, okay, this is a deep dive on Johnny Cash song. Uh, the Johnny <laughs> the Johnny Cash song is about how like uh, th- this guy he's telling Johnny Cash is telling the story in the song in the first person he goes to jail and he's he's being charged for murder and he can, he can get out of it but he'll have to tell the judge that he was fucking his best friend's wife Whoa. and mm. he decides to die and you know get executed uh rather than like Dang, besmirch that's her honor and that's, that's what i feel like is going on right here this guy's the johnny cash man and he fucked this guy's fucking wife <laughs> and he doesn't want to say so <laughs> um, that's my theory. I'm holding to it. Uh, three episodes in, all my right. theory's holding strong. All right, all right. What well, would you rate this episode? Uh, what are we doing again? Uh, out of ten, out of ten, out of, out of ten, out of ten, yeah. I would give it. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Look, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but it was. It it was. It was the worst of the three. So I'm gonna give it four. Four uh, starships out of ten. Okay. <laughs> gotcha, 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 gotcha. What about you, Dan? Um. Well. Seeing like I have seen some of the better episodes that the series has to offer, so knowing where it can go from here, I'm gonna call this a two. Yeah, I think I'm. I think like I'm a three. Uh, I think it's just it like like the cast and crew or large members of them, uh, large portions of them believe this is the worst episode of the series. It's kind of lucky that it's so early on the worst episode. Oh yeah, to- um, totally. And I think yeah. that's actually what one of the crew, uh, what one of the cast members said. I think it might have been um, Brent Spiner who said that it's like it's actually really oh, lucky okay. that we had something so bad so early and we never, and never really got that yeah, we never really yeah. sunk that low again. Yeah, yeah. So that's that at least that's nice. Like it's even for podcast purposes like let's just get the shitty one out of the way and move on. It's not like there's the next one is super great or anything. <laughs> well, now I feel like I, I was too generous with it. Four out of fucking ten, and you guys give it a two well, and a three. Well, well, listen, let we'll let we'll let you. I don't know where to go course, from here. Course, course correct as okay. needed. You know, we're, I may have to. These scores are spongy. I, yeah, yeah. I, at the end of the season, I might have to c- go back and be like, "Hey, sorry, dude, I fucked up." Yeah, uh, this fine. was this was like a this was like a soft one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Like before I close it's out, like, I did want to like I I I've, I wanted to talk at least briefly about um like this vaccine thing. Mm-hmm. Like when Doctor Crusher was like describing or like when when she has that one scene that she has with Picard in this episode. Like I actually mm-hmm. really like that scene because well, they have they- yeah. Like first she starts off with a very like pandemic friendly description of like you've never seen people die from this disease. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like oh that hits close to home. But then Picard like trumps her <laughs> yeah. with a, with a big old like with, with a Picard maneuver of saying like well I've seen my share of death too. I'm a goddamn yeah. starship yeah. captain. Like you yeah. can't you can't win over yeah. yeah you can't win here. 
And she's like, God yeah, damn it. Yeah. Like, uh, how come I'm a doctor who cares so much? And then like immediately flips over and gives her that subtle compliment of maybe the good ones never get, you know, calluses over their feelings. And yeah. then she's like, oh, you. Yeah, it's like aside from the like it's well written but aside from that like those two actors just have a ton of chemistry yeah they do yeah, I, like yeah, i enjoy yeah. every scene that they have together they're legitimately great yeah and i, and I feel like they did the but you know, then she pushes Wesley for SummerSlam immediately afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> she well, has no choice. I know. She has no choice. <laughs> also, also, we're three episodes in, and Jordy has taken off his visor twice, mm. just for the record. <laughs> All right, let's keep that uh, count going. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and he, I like, uh, just as a little note, I like that shaver he uses. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, I wanted to bring him up. Yeah. I actually have it highlighted the, in my yeah. notes. Look at Jordy's dumb yeah, the, plastic cube shaving razor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have this, like, giant novelty keycap next to me <laughs> on my desk and it, it, it looks a lot like that shaver <laughs> so i ke- i just kept thinking is this, what is it? he has on his face <laughs> so it's like some sort of like hover space laser shaver yeah and and, and like data's right like he's like remember remember i made you i like perfectly like fix your razor so it gives you the perfect shave and he's like well sometimes you don't want the best shave and it's like what do you mean <laughs> yeah you, know, you, want the, you want the best shave like you don't want to get cut like yeah I, i'm you're using this magical box that's shaving you but like why wouldn't you use the the perfect thing the data this goddamn fucking robot could it could it, like fix for you i don't understand also, also like that's not a thing you say about shaving yeah like, yeah like like i don't want the can, sharpest can, but- razor you could potentially say that about like paintings or like stuff yeah. like that, like art, like jazz music. But you're, sh- yeah, yeah, something. But you're shaving. Yeah, data. Like, you oh, don't want. I, 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 I like you know the what, best. Though? We sh- we probably shouldn't be saying anything because look at Jordy's face. It's fucking baby smooth all the time. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing something right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, but like, but it's not like you're gonna be like, you know, what, data. Sometimes I like to accidentally leave a little stubble here and there. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. What doesn't make any sense? But although I do like that 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 scene, it's starting to clearly establish like, like Jordy becomes Data's friend, yeah, like best yeah. friend. So I like that this is kind of the start of that. Where Spoiler like, alert, dude. Oh yeah. Spoiler well, also, alert, dude. Uh, another yeah. point. Like uh, <laughs> already, we are seeing like a bit of acknowledgement of Data and Yara's little fling in the past episode. Well, what was that? Um, I, 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 like I don't remember that part. Something is said. I forgot the exact line, and I, I I feel remiss in not having it written down like verbatim in my notes. But like Yar mm-hmm. reacts to a line regarding like the sexual tension she had with Lutan, and then Data like kind of like gives her a look. It's like oh. <laughs> it, it's something related to that. Like like it was yeah, a very yeah, clear yeah, like yeah. callback to the pr- the previous episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny that like like Tasha Tasha turns like she because she's such like a such a cool no nonsense character in in previous episodes and this one like her character is basically reduced to well he's really hot well like i kind of i kind of want to do it wait hold (laughs) on we can't say previous episodes when there's only been three two previous and the one previous she was sexing up everybody yeah that's true i guess i guess so that's Uh, the thing that's the thing about this episode is that like you can't throw this episode Right after the fucking everyone's fucking episode, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, when you just think about spot, what yeah, it must have been like spot, to yeah. absorb these episodes yeah. in like that yeah. sequence in you know in that timeline, it's yeah. like what were these people going? What through? is this show? Yeah, what is this <laughs> show? Yeah, imagine you're watching, you're watching uh, like like them air like every week, and you're like, you get to episode two, and you're like, God damn, dude, it's getting fucking sexy, dude. None of that really fast bullshit. Yeah, none of that bullshit was fucking. It's like you like sex, huh? Year. How about racism? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to all the isms yeah, yeah right away um but yeah so uh not the best uh, this is one of the ones so like i'm keeping track of like okay so like the the as we call it the sex episode last week's episode um <laughs> or like the wesley hijacks the whole enterprise episode i would watch that again mm-hmm. it, you know there's a lot of fun funny stuff in it but this one i will i don't care to ever watch it again fair mm-hmm yeah hard pass very fair <laughs> yeah that's that's completely understandable yeah uh so and then the next episode the last outpost uh is the one where we see the ferengi who themselves are sort of a racist depiction of of jewish people <laughs> so yeah and that's uh, kind of hard coded mm-hmm. into the into the lore of the universe there yeah it's it's something you can't really ever divorce from the the dna of star trek the fact that the race itself is just kind of 
fucked and poisoned this way. But here we are. We're going to we're going to get into that. And uh, in the meantime, if you want to catch more episodes of Newbie Star Trek, you can find it at NewbieStarTrek.com. And also, if you want to catch uh, the other podcast we're all on, which is uh, the Fugitive Frames Film Podcast, yeah. where we just talk about, well, we don't just talk about, we come up with the topic. Usually, we have a guest on who will figure out uh, a topic they want to talk about, whether it's like something as specific as a specific year or in general, like horror movies or 80s action movies. Or Netflix recommendations mm-hmm. or stuff like that. What we're trying to do every every other month, what we're going to try to do. Uh, Netflix recommendations, uh, Amazon streaming, opinions on, Prime. Un- on unobtainium. Yep, yep. <laughs> We're gonna have a whole episode devoted to uh, Avatar and its sequels. Perfect. What they're gonna be <laughs> theories. <laughs> the ACU must oh. be acknowledged. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one one thing I am excited for when we finally reach the year 2022 is that we're uh we were talking about eventually doing a Matrix retrospective. Uh, yeah. Once the Matrix sequel comes out, so Woo. that one preemptively yeah. i'm excited for because spoilers i love the matrix <laughs> so if you want to catch the fugitive frames film podcast you can find it at fugitiveframes.com. we also have a youtube channel called fugitive games where dan and i and i, I think at this point also ricardo and marcel uh, yeah because you guys are also uh, been recording some videos for our channel yeah. um spoilers it's going to be something for halloween or yeah. the, the the Halloweeny month. And, we're peeping uh, and we're creeping. Yeah, uh, and uh, we we basically do let's plays. Sometimes we do reviews uh, and some other fun stuff. But you know, you know, it's uh, if you want to just hear us talking some more shit while we're playing games kind of mediocrely. <laughs> yeah, you could you could go to fugitive games. That's the URL, or search on YouTube for fugitive games. Um, and then the, the podcasts you can find them all over now, like uh. Uh, newbie star trek is i think at this point i'm pretty much every major podcast podcast, portal yeah pretty much everywhere anywhere fine podcasts are sold yeah yeah the only caveat is that for some reason it's still not showing up on the google search so uh if you guys want to subscribe for it for google podcasts i would suggest just clicking on the link on our website it just takes you to our page uh to the google podcast page you could just click subscribe and you're done um, but we're also up on apple podcasts which means you know it's distributed on lots of different uh, podcast portals like uh, podcast addict that uses the app the itunes search engine and then also spotify which is a really nice easy way just to listen because everyone's got spotify at this point so yeah. you can just listen to there but yeah next week we're going to talk about the last outpost which is going to be the one where we're going to probably be making fun of the set as much a lot <laughs> so uh in the meantime i've been marvin this has been uh ricardo and dan and we'll see you guys next time see you later later guys. Not myself. <laughs>